to the Paint, Rest, Repeat podcast with Roz Gervais and Laura Day, where we chat about our creative lives as artists while keeping it real and a little bit messy. We're here to inspire creatives just like you to push past those boundaries and make art that you love. Let's dive in. Today, Laura and I are going to be chatting about um, how to know or how to tell if you're an artist, because Mm -hmm. this is a theme that comes up often, and we often talk to people about this very topic. So we thought we'd sort of unpack it and just chat a little bit about it. Yeah, and it's also the confidence piece, like how to build that confidence to call yourself an artist, claim that title, and like all the... um, different variations of like how um, you perceive artists and how other people perceive the title as an artist. And yeah, I think it's just going to be an interesting like chat between us today. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. And I always feel like this, when this topic comes up, um, the person that first comes to mind is my beautiful dear mum, um, who doesn't listen to the podcast, although I might point her in this direction um, sometime. Um, she is an artist. So she has studied fine arts at uni. She did a master's and all of that. And by nature, she is just, she's an artist through and through, but she will not claim the title. Mm-hmm. And I was, I was thinking about her last night, actually, as I was painting and I was thinking, actually, you know what, out of all the things that I try to do um, in my art business and in my life, one of my key goals should be to help her to find that, um, what's the word that find that, do you know what I'm trying to say? Like almost like claim that title. Claim that As title, a, but not in a shallow, not in a shallow way. But real like almost to find find herself, which I know it sounds a bit, you know, mm-hmm. interesting for an older person. But um, yeah, yeah. Anyway, what are your th- thoughts around that? You know, people who have studied fine arts, you know, it's like so many of us don't don't call ourselves artists because we haven't studied fine arts, yet there are still people who have studied fine arts and won't take that title. Um, yeah, I know a prolific artist um, that still struggles with the title of calling themselves an artist and they are incredible. They've had multiple shows. Uh, their work is incredible. They are super, super talented, uh, yet that um, insecurity Mm. or um, the thoughts around how people perceive you as like an artist and those sort of societal beliefs and, you know, sort of projections that get placed on you as a creative person. And, yeah, it's just so interesting. Um, Some people struggle with claiming that title and then some people totally embrace it. Mm. And I think some people only believe that you can call yourself an artist if you're actively making work and you're making art all the time as well. But that's not really the case, I don't think. I think you're just, I think we're all creative people. I think everyone is creative. Um, but, yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, whether, whether, yeah, you have the confidence or not, yeah, I think we probably need to like dig in around that, around that confidence piece and like maybe why people struggle to call themselves an artist. Yeah, so so I didn't study fine arts at uni. I did go to the College of Fine Arts here and I studied design rather than fine arts. Um, I feel like I have to say that before having this conversation. Um, and I just, I the stories I hear from people who have, or many people who have done the fine arts degree or master's or whatever it is, um, is that I, I, I feel like it's around intimidation, you know, so they and and all the critiquing work that happens in uni and I, I I mean I I haven't been through it but I get the idea that it's so harsh that it sort of scares people off it almost scares them away from the process of you know finding their voice um as an individual artist and it just yeah 
I'm nodding along um, because I have trained in visual arts. So I did um, I did it at TAFE. I did two year uh, diploma in visual arts. Then I went on. I studied design, but I also took electives in uh, printmaking. So I was in the fine art arena. So that um, was another three years at university at the Queensland College of Art. Um, I've never. I can totally relate with. Um, what you were talking about, Roz, around the critiques and how your confidence in your creative practice and your art, um, it can be beaten down when it's being assessed. And, you know, you can have all these questions around, you know, whether whether the art that you're creating is valuable and uh, whether it's worthy of hanging in galleries and all that sort of stuff. But I think because for me, um, I think because I studied at university, um, I never really had an issue with calling myself an, an artist. I think oh, I, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, but then some so people like, do. Yeah, and some people do. Um, yeah, so I, I feel like that this they can be two different things. So for me, it's more like the confidence around the work that I'm creating and the self-belief mm. in, in the, in the work that I'm producing that I took, I took a beating <laughs> through art school because it, it is just so harsh. And those voices just remained with me for a lot of the, my um, career. And it's only just recently the last three years that I've got back into painting and uh, sort of developed my style in um, abstract art and, and followed that path and, had my two solo exhibitions I think that confidence in my art has increased it's almost like you have to prove it to yourself mm -hmm. not to anyone else but mm -hmm. just prove it to yourself apply yourself you know mm -hmm. to your own practice mm -hmm. um, put together a body of work put mm -hmm. together put on a show and just mm -hmm. prove to yourself that you not just you can do this but this is who you are you know yeah yeah and so the title of artist for you, how do you, how does that sit on you, Roz? Like, how do you feel? Yeah. So it's a really interesting one for me. So um, I have a lot of thoughts around it. So I, whilst I, I went to uni and I did the whole creativity thing um, and I did a lot of art at high, at high school as well. I did three unit art and all of that, which is I think only relevant for people listening in New South Wales, um, Australia, but um. Yeah, so I am confident in calling myself an artist, but I would say I'm largely self-taught. And sometimes I wonder, like especially in the context of um, my mum, um, why I'm so confident in calling myself an artist when she's studying and she can't take that title. So I'm like, I'm just so different. <laughs> I'm born so different. Um, and, yeah, I, I think that might be why I have... Um, a deep understanding of what it is to be an artist and that it's more to do with a personality thing, a passion thing, um, you know, the fact that you notice beauty wherever you are and all you can see is colour combinations and um, curves of leaves for me. I'm, you know, I'm always thinking botanically. That's how, how my brain is. Um, yeah, I think it's more like a way of way of being or a way of viewing the world. What yep. do you think? <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. Like I feel like, um, yeah, it is like the lens that you see the world through and, uh, yeah, being creative in that way is, yeah, I mean, I'm always taking photos of textures on walls and the colour combinations like you were saying and, autumn leaves and like yeah just soaking that all up like I think that that is a way of being and it is there is a creative lifestyle aspect to it as well like you know um building that creative community and um going to galleries and like doing all those things like that all comes as a part of the parcel of um living a creative lifestyle and and being an artist so I wonder if people are struggling like they are self-taught Maybe they're in the closet a little bit. Maybe they don't really talk about their arts practice with their friends and family because they're um, a little bit worried, like what they think of them. And they're not like stepping into 
that title of an artist and maybe they're not um because um there's you know those forms that you have to fill in and you write your career yeah. like your what mm. you do as an occupation mm. I had maybe, to do that the other day <laughs> <laughs> maybe they shy away from writing artist on their occupation because they don't think it's a legitimate um career um I wonder like what what tips we'd have for them or like what how they could uh step into that um confidence piece around calling themselves an artist more yeah definitely and I think you know I think actually before calling yourself an artist publicly comes the realization that you actually you are an artist I think that's the first first part is that realization mm -hmm. um I just I think it's the awareness around what brings you what brings you joy you know mm -hmm. and how you want to spend your time mm -hmm. and importantly um yeah it's how you want to spend your time so it's not if you're making art every single day and you know popping out I mean I mean I I my art practice is <laughs> I paint often but I'm not painting as much as I want to paint but I'm still mm. I still am an artist because it's like it's in me you know so yeah so yeah you might not be painting every day and all of that but yeah, if that's who you are, like it's around knowing who you are and what brings you that joy, I think. Yeah, I think it, it, a lot of it's around that inner validation, isn't it? Mm, mm. Because there could be people that are creating every single day, but they just don't have that inner validation of, yeah, I am a creative person and I see the world this way mm. and I'm doing all these things and engaged in all of these projects and um you know, they, they have that burning desire to like step into that, but it, it, it just is around, I feel like it's a lot of mindset work and personal development and yeah, really looking at what brings value to your life and what, um, what you enjoy. And if it is creative things, and if it is like that, you want to embrace that, then, um, yeah, just, sort of doing that inner work around that validation and maybe also um oh without sounding too heavy maybe also your calling or like your role in this world you know like if if you are a um you know visual and creative human is it perhaps part of your journey here and your purpose here um to share that with others and help them to pay attention to the beauty that's around them. Like, I think there's, sometimes we have to look outside of ourselves as well to realize who we are, um, which sounds, that sounds deep. That's really deep, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> yeah. Interesting. So um, yeah. How, like how others um, see you as well? Like, is that well, around that piece? You, what or? can you bring? What can you bring to other people? Like sometimes claiming that artist title, perhaps sometimes that, you know, claiming the title is actually, um, what's the word? Um, giving back, like giving back to the world and helping them to see um, the beauty in front of them through your art. Um, and also, you know, even just modeling that confidence. So if you can call yourself an artist and take that step into, you know, who you are as a character, you're modeling for other people as well, how we can be ourselves and we can also be whoever we want to be. Like our time here is, is our, is our time, you know, so mm -hmm. like own it and be proud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, so what you were saying was uh, it's almost like artists are reflectors out into the world. Mm. So we, we create and it's almost like we're showing like how we see the world through the work that we create. And then that's how like that's part of that conversation with like the broader community and the and the people in our lives and yeah and our and part of our purpose perhaps it actually makes me think of um the artist Georgia O'Keefe um you, and how she used to paint um really really like close-ups of florals because she really wanted people to pay attention to that beauty and to stop from all the you know stop amongst all the crazy business busyness of the world and just take a moment to appreciate that mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, I think if we 
yeah, I don't know, like by, by claiming your artist career and by realizing that's who you are, um, you can, you can have that impact and you can have more of an impact. Actually, I think if you can be a little bit, a little bit, um, I don't want to say loud, but a little bit more, <laughs> um, confident, um, mm -hmm. even in saying quietly that you're an artist, you know, you're, you're inviting other people to see the world differently with you. Mm. Um, say so I'm thinking about the stories that we get when we're growing up and say we're a little artist, like a little creative being and we're in school and maybe the stories that we've heard from teachers, from peers, um, from parents and all of those um, little things that we've absorbed along the way that builds our picture of what it is to be an artist and whether those responses when you're creating your little artwork in your schoolroom and your teacher comments on your work, like whether that was um, validating or whether it was actually like damaging and it was like, something negative and you sort of picked up those uh, stories. So do you think that that plays into our perception of um, One being an artist? 100%. And you know what? Um, I used to be a primary teacher. So I know a lot about that scene. And I have really strong opinions <laughs> <laughs> on art in primary schools um, and secondary schools too. But I've got more experience in the primary space. Um, and just, I, I don't know, sorry, teachers, but if you're a teacher teaching art, and just in a primary setting, so you're not an art specialist and you're teaching a general art lesson in a primary setting, I don't think you should be going around and saying whether something is good or bad, whether you like it, it is irrelevant. And even in my teaching, um, when I work with children, I don't, I, I'm always zipping it. I have my opinions, sure, but my opinions are irrelevant. What matters is that the kids are tuning in um, to what they like, what they enjoy, and they're learning different things, asking themselves, oh, I'd like to do that. How do I do that? Let's give it a try sort of thing. Um, it's, it's, a very, it's a very different teaching space to English and maths, you know, like, uh, yeah, very, it's a lot more complex, actually, I think on a psychological side, but also in terms of nurturing these beautiful creatives. Because mm -hmm. there's no right or wrong. No, and even as adult artists, it's the same thing. There's no right or wrong. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if you're going to if you're going to get anywhere near um, saying there's a right or wrong, it's right or wrong based on your heart um, mm -hmm. as an individual artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And I think those stories like come back to us when we're in our practice and you analyze your work and you like you title it as good art or bad art. But I don't think that that comes into play because it's all about like that experiential effect and like how it makes us feel. Yeah, it's yeah. so interesting. This is such an interesting topic. <laughs> and I think as an adult, you know, you can you can think back through that, right? You can mm. say, oh, and <laughs> I still have mum stories. Oh, my goodness. I just have more mum stories <laughs> about um, critiquing my work as a kid. Um, but, yeah, you think back to those stories and you think now you can go, oh, well, that was just her opinion. Um, she might have had a bad day or whatever it is, you know, like you can make sense of it now even though those voices pop up you can try to make sense of it and then stop them mucking with your you know progress or your art yeah. practice but as a kid um you don't have that ability necessarily and then it can stop you in your tracks from your you know pro your trajectory is that the right word you know your the yeah, yeah the path. trajectory of your Thank you. career <laughs> and yeah yeah, I mean, um, for me, like I was rewarded and um, validated as a creative person when I was young. So then that helped form my self-opinion and um, and like desire to pursue it because I'm like, oh, OK, I'm being told that I'm good at this. Mm. But it still didn't make me feel like my work was good enough. But then I think that was a lot around like all of my self-confidence just in in general in growing up as well um yeah so I think I mean if we were gonna offer 
some suggestions or advice to listeners if they are in that place where they're they're not fully claiming the artist title but they really want to and they they see other people do it and they're like oh how is it so easy for them I think it would be around like looking into those stories and different things that you picked up when you were younger and doing a bit of inner work and just being like oh okay like reflecting on on um, those pieces and what would you suggest Rose? In addition to that, I was thinking about um, stepping outside of yourself um, and asking yourself how you define an artist. Mm -hmm. So if somebody else was an artist, what makes them an artist? Mm -hmm. And just, yeah, just unpacking it. And is Mm -hmm. it because they make art every day? Mm -hmm. Is it because they sell their art? Is it because all they do is art and they don't have a day job? Mm-hmm. another day job I should say yeah, yeah. is it because, is it why why are they allowed to call themselves an artist mm-hmm. um, by your standards mm-hmm. but you're not allowed to call yourself an artist mm-hmm. yeah that's interesting yes definitely mm. that's good that's good things to sort of ponder isn't it mm. And I mean, I catch myself asking myself that stuff as well. It's just, it's a mm. bit of a loop, isn't it? Yeah, it is a <laughs> round little and bit, round we go. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I feel like this whole art journey is like a deep dive into uh, personal growth mm. and really like looking at, yeah, those it's little such, hidden things. <laughs> it's such a great thing because I was telling you this story um, before we were recording about a recent exhibition I was in, or I am in as we speak, um, and how turning up to that opening night, I saw my art on the walls amongst everyone else's and I all the imposter syndrome came in, the confidence Um, was feeling really low I I went into that gallery feeling confident and I walked out feeling rubbish Um, and I it's interesting so when you talk about the self-development journey it's not like oh my confidence is low let's work on that working 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 on that tick worked on that confidence sorted forever more no it's not not, like that no because there's always going to be like triggers along the way that sort of slip you up hey can I ask about that though yep so that recent experience Mm -hmm. how does that compare to how you felt in the art to art show when you had your um piece chosen to exhibit and your finalist yes art art prize like was there a difference very good point. Um, I was much more confident in the Art to Art Prize, and I think that's because I was selected, mm-hmm. whereas the local exhibition that I was talking about, anyone who is a paying member can participate. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like I had my validation. It's, I, I feel a little bit silly saying that word, but I had my validation prior to, to the um, Art to Art Prize. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think okay. that might be why. Yeah. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just wondering, and I was wondering also if it was just like the community that you're a part of in like, I feel like they would have, they'd be different. Like your local mm. art society might be different to the community of artists that has been like curated with art to art. And yeah, just like where you place yourself. Like, I feel like that would come into play and different feelings around that. And yeah. Yeah. Very, very different. I think that's a good point. I felt a lot more, um, yeah, I'm much more at home in that art to art sort of artist painterly that sort of space you Mm -hmm. know yeah and pushing the boundaries a bit like I almost felt you know what I felt like my art was out of place in the local exhibition and Mm -hmm. I think it's not to do with my art not being good enough but it's rather it's not the right fit yeah yeah that's so interesting. So, I mean, that's a little nugget of uh, advice as well. It's just like, where does your art fit? Where do you feel most comfortable? Um, you know, I think that that is it, it, like valid things to look at and sort of consider when you're putting your art out into the world because it is so vulnerable. Like you, you create mostly in isolation at home and you create this piece that you're pouring your heart and soul into and then you know when we put it out into the world that can be very triggering and that that can be 
um, quite scary for some people. I think, you know, the confidence builds the more and more you do it though. I think so. And the, and, and I think as you're saying as well, the, you weren't saying relationships, you were sort of more talking about being in amongst the right community, like mm-hmm. the right scene, the right context. Yes. But I think relationships make a big difference as well, you know. So if you're popping your art into a local, like if I did a show with you, for example, Laura, mm-hmm. actually almost, sorry, I would do my best art for you, Laura, but <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be about the art. It's about collaboration doing collaborating doing something together doing what we love um inviting other people into that our little art world you know mm-hmm. like it's more than just the art yeah um yeah anyway, yeah sorry I'm a little bit everywhere with no that's all right today. this is all really good um as you were talking I was thinking about my two solo shows that I organized independently and like I felt so great doing that because I, I organized it. I invited people from my networks. I invited people from my Instagram and, um, it was like a beautiful, like supporting, nurturing space. I had full creative control. There was no other agendas and it was just a project for me, um, that I was able to work towards and develop a new body of work for. And yeah, it was just that. And I mean, um, the art space, that I showed in, it was all like about community support. So it was at a local hotel that opens up um, their calendar to artists to hang art on their walls. And it's their way to give back to the community. They don't charge commission. They don't charge a fee. And it's um, just, you know, artist organized. So you feel supported. Yeah. And I think, yeah, that's a key part as well. Oh my gosh, we've hit like the jackpot here. If you're supported in your art practice, Mm. then that will um, create like a nurturing space for you Mm. to like develop that confidence. And And that's like, that's all like just in general for childhood development, isn't it? It's just, you know, having that support, like being present and, um, you know, really, yeah, available. So I wonder if, you know, building those networks and and building those connections and not doing it on your own. Mm, I think that's yeah. that's important. And I think, um, you know, coming back to the topic of, yeah, confidence, like working on your confidence and going, yep, tips, got that sorted. <laughs> um, the fact that that doesn't exist as well. Mm. Um, having that network, so, or maybe not even a network, you could just have one or two, you know, art buddies um, like we have each other mm-hmm. so that you can talk to that person and they can help you through those times. Um, or you can have communities as well that you can lean on um, to help you through those times because it goes around. It's not just you. You're not the only one that goes through this um we all do and it's yeah it's really nice to have people around you that can support you um on the journey because you can't give up because you can't give up just because you're having you know a bad week or something like that that's that's not if you're an artist by nature Mm -hmm. that's who you are um and you're gonna you know push through yeah Oh, great. I think this was an awesome conversation. Do you feel like you've got anything to add or do you think we've sort of covered most of the topic today? I I think we've covered a lot of it. I feel like we could unpack a few extra things in future episodes. You know, I think, yeah, I think that's quite a bit here actually. Mm. So listeners, if you found any particular part of the conversation um, interesting and you'd like us to explore any little slice of it in more detail, definitely send us a message or comment below if you're watching this as a YouTube video um, because we love to be responsive to you and to support and nurture you. So, yeah, so definitely let us know. Um, And... We'd love for you to help us grow the YouTube channel as well. So if you could like and subscribe and watch the videos to the end, that's really going to help us to grow our channel. So that would be awesome. Yay. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll be back again in two weeks' time. Um, We've always got lots of exciting topics planned, um, but we also love to hear from you. So, yeah, don't remember. Don't forget to, don't remember to reach (laughs) out. Don't forget to reach out. Chat to you all soon. Bye.